and the urging for evacuation and safety is paramount. Robert Gray in Fort Myers, Florida, with the latest. Robert. Yeah, Neil, a very dangerous situation here all up and down the western uh, seaboard of uh, the peninsula of Florida. And you see Fort Myers Beach behind me, rain coming down already. And you see some of the debris that's left over from two years ago, Hurricane Ian. Uh, this is a Category 5 storm, and it is going to come in late Wednesday evening, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. roughly. But take a look at what Fort Myers Beach has endured uh, just in the past couple months. Tropical Storm Debbie flooding the beach out back in early. August, unfortunately, uh, catching many people off guard. And then less than two weeks ago, Hurricane Helene making its way up the Gulf Coast and swamping parts of Fort Myers Beach as well. And it wasn't even near a direct impact. Remember, Helene hit the uh, Nature Coast, then went up into North Carolina. And that tragedy and catastrophe is still going on. In the meantime, all across uh, the Gulf Coast on the western side today, mandatory evacuations are in play and there are literally thousands if not millions of people fleeing the coastline sandbagging going on boarding up of windows on homes and businesses and people that are already frustrated and scared by what happened two years ago by hurricane ian here in fort myers beach voicing their thoughts to me earlier let's listen to one woman after ian i'm scared I'm very, I'm very afraid. Do you think that people are going to evacuate and heed the orders of that? Yes, I do. After Ian, they are. I'm, as soon as I get my shutters up and my sandbags in, I'm probably out of here myself because I can't move through that again. It's going to be bad when we're coming back to the devastation. Now, Neil, there are about 5,000 National Guard troops on standby, electrical crews uh, that are sleeping up in Tampa and the, and the stadium where the Tampa Bay Rays uh, stay. We don't know the exact landfall, where it's going to be. Uh, but I can tell you this, and this is really important for everyone to understand. So right now, it's a Cat 5. It's in the Gulf, okay? It's about 700 miles uh, from the peninsula of Florida, making its way toward here. What's going to happen is that Cat 5 is going to dissipate. It may go down into a Cat 3, but don't let that fool you because when that happens, the storm actually expands and the impacts will be just as significant all the way from Naples to the south of where I'm at, all the way up into the nature coast. Right now, the center of the storm, at least as it is, will likely come in just south of Tampa, but that could change. This is a catastrophe awaiting, and we just hope that people are heeding the warnings to get out. Those numbers and how quickly we got to them. I went to bed last night. It was a Category 1. Woke up this morning. It was a Category 2. Boom, now Category 5. Has there ever been anything like that? Neil, we have to go back over a decade to see anything remotely close to this when you talk about the rapid intensification. 2005, we saw something similar in the Gulf of Mexico. This is only the 15th Category 5 hurricane ever in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the latest in the season we've ever had one. You mentioned those winds up to 175 miles an hour. It really was an explosion as far as how quickly this has strengthened. Anytime you see an eye wall that looks kind of like that, just really symmetrical, large storm, you know this is a powerful one that really kind of has its act together. You talk about how quickly it grew. And yesterday morning, uh, wind speeds were down 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, jumped very quickly up to that 175. The thing is, when you get a storm this strong, it's kind of hard to hold something this powerful together. Uh, you're seeing those winds way above where you'd see the cutoff for a Category 5. As a result, it's going to run into some upper-level winds, maybe weaken a little bit, but that's going to maybe not tell the entire story. A couple of things are going on here. You see that landfall getting into Wednesday evening. Uh, so with the uh, strength that it is currently at, it's going to pick up a whole lot of water. That could be the storm surge. And just because the winds die down a little bit, obviously that's good news. You don't want really strong winds. Uh, 125 miles an hour is still strong, and it's going to bring that wall of water up along the west coast of Florida. Storm surge is going to be a really big deal. And actually, when a storm starts to lose some of that wind speed, it grows. You'll see it here. This is kind of our forecast. And you see uh, you have an idea of how wide it is starts to fall down to a category four, a category three, and notice how that storm grew. So suddenly more folks are getting in on this, that wall of water still rushing with it. So I just don't want anyone to think that because the wind speeds die down a little bit, the threat is any less. The George is right now, the mayor of Fort Myers, uh, unfortunately, what uh, could prove to be a target zone uh, for this hurricane. Mayor, how are you holding up? What's the latest you're telling your folks? We're telling them to pay attention to this storm. 
Uh, they should have all their plans in place by now. They should be taking the, uh, uh, the steps to protect their, their properties and their lives. Uh, the city, the local government, we've done everything we can to prepare. We're ready to respond. But really, right now, Neil, it's up to the people to take responsibility for themselves and make sure they take the proper steps. I do want to catch up to what's going on, Mayor, so if you'll indulge me here. Is there an evacuation order in effect for the Fort Myers area? Yes, and the, the storm category is A and B. Okay. There's a mandatory evacuation. That's primarily the beach, the islands, and along the, the coast. All right, we talked about some who experienced similar de developments in the past and had to evacuate. And, and some of them had said, you know, going back seven years, the last time we saw something of this magnitude, uh, you know, th there weren't enough gas stations or gas stations were running out of gas. And at a time of electric vehicles, not as big as they are today, a lot of them had issues w w with the, the, the weather and all the best. Or how many are heeding that, that evacuation order? It, it's hard to tell. Um, I just hope that it, it's that people are listening and they are evacuating. I know um, I went out, checked out some gas stations. Uh, the lines are not too long. Some of them are out of gas. So I, I just hope that people made the proper plans in enough time. You know, it, it's all happened so fast, Mayor, and, and you've been very good at mobilizing very quickly in the face of this, as, as well as the governor and, and, and all top officials in, in your fine state. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people were kind of numbed into a full sense of security prior, you know, certainly to Helene and, and, and now this. And, and they might have thought, hey, we, we, we thought we dodged a bullet. This so-called historically busy hurricane season wouldn't pan out that way. Well, it's starting to pan out that way, isn't it? And, you know, Neil, the, the, the most predictable thing about hurricanes is that they're unpredictable. And people needed to understand that. Also, you know, we're, we're talking once again the storm surge. And while you can hide from the wind, you've got to run from the water. And right. people have to understand that and do that. You know, the one thing, Mayor, and it just boggles my mind here, 12-foot storm surges. I mean, uh, that's double the, the, the biggest we've seen of late. I, I, I can't even fathom it. I, I've, look, I, I was in law enforcement 25 years here in Fort Myers, have been through a lot of storms. Um, Ian was by far the worst, and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this storm has me concerned. All right, Mayor, I wish you uh, safety and all. Something I find just unbelievable as the hurricane, this hurricane which is heading towards Florida could be catastrophic. It could be one of the worst hurricanes in the history of Florida. Yeah, you're talking 175 miles per hour winds, just really devastation is inbound. Uh, the current vice president, uh, VP Kamala Harris, who is also running to be president of the United States of America. I can't believe I'm saying this. Put in a call to the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, and he refuses to take the call. Why? What's going on? His beloved friend, whatever the relationship is between DeSantis and Trump these days, uh, was saying that the government isn't doing enough. Can you imagine if it was the other way around, if a Republican governor put in the call to the current administration and they refused to take the call? These are real serious situations with people's livelihoods. Why are there, why are people playing politics? It doesn't make any sense at all. Because the, the hurricane, the hurricane's not going to differentiate between whether you uh, are a blue tick or a red tick. The hurricane's not going to like think, oh, well, you're a governor. You didn't, uh, put a, you didn't accept Kevin Harris's uh, uh, phone call. We'll make sure nothing happens in any particular parts of Florida. Uh, you don't want anything to happen, so you can then spin it. It's unbelievable. It's also disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. DeSantis refused to take a call from Vice President Harris specifically around Hurricane Milton. Um, can you just talk about that and any communication I, around this, this, this new is, hurricane? Look, that is something for the governor to speak to himself. If you have the president and you have the vice president reaching out to offer up assistance provided to the, your constituents, the people who live in your state, to make sure we are doing everything that we need to do from federal response and we're reaching out, offering our support, that's for the governor. And the governor is up for, to him if he wants to respond to us or not. But 
What we're doing is we're working with state and local officials to make sure that we are pre-positioned, to make sure that we are ready uh, to be there for the communities that are going to be impacted. We are doing the job uh, that is needed, that we believe is needed for to protect uh, the communities and to make sure that they have everything that is needed. You heard me talk about the declaration. Uh, we approved that uh, for Florida. That's moving forward. And so we're taking this very, very seriously. That's for the governor to speak to. That is. I'm proud to be promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. It's my favorite book. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody. Donald Trump found guilty all 34 counts of falsifying business records. Donald Trump's hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. He had an affair with Trump. I am the chosen one. The Trump Organization frauded the state of New York. $354 million. I'm very greedy. We must make America pray again. How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? You know, it's really hard to describe because it's something that you would typically look at at some movie or... I remember I would get people saying, why are you talking about Fox News? Why are you covering Fox? And I realized that those same people almost had a mission for us to turn a blind eye to the nonsense, the propaganda being pushed out by Fox because this is where we are. 30 days to go. Fox has to be put under the microscope. Can't carry on ignoring them. All right? They are doing what in any other country would be called state broadcasting. All right? But they're not broadcasting on behalf of the uh, current government. They are literally broadcasting propaganda, lies. You could actually call it straightforward political commercials. All right? Today, uh, Larry, look at me. I've got a job on the TV. You know, the guy gets a little bit, uh, how should we say? Let's use the word street if it's a Democrat. But he doesn't speak like that normally. But anyway, I, I distract. Uh, this they're reporting on the after effect of the horrific uh, Hurricane Helene, but it's basically trying to attack FEMA, pushing this narrative, this lie uh, that the Democrats, the Democratic government, uh, uh, put money in other directions, basically for helping immigrants, that's what they're saying, instead of supporting uh, hurricane relief, supporting FEMA. Just not true. They pushed the line out well, on the ground. Uh, the FEMA people are doing their best they can, but it's up in some government office uh, that funds are not there. It is a lie. All right? uh, there are a couple of people on Fox who try to put out the truth, but in general, no. The problem is when they say FEMA is here, the problem is the residents aren't seeing them right now, but just a big undertaking from the people coming together here, businesses coming together, the Samaritan's Purse who is on the ground. So where the government hasn't been here, you've seen the community come together, guys. It's always the case. It's often the case. It's all too often the case, Lawrence, these days when it comes to some crisis. You look to your neighbor.